and bring in our senior pastor, Reverend Dr. Njuguna, a father in the house, uh, to be able to take up from here and uh, pray and dismiss our children to go to your service. Children, uh, you can come over right away. Just come, please. Children, come over. The pastor will pray for you and proceed. As the, as the children come, we're going to be thanking God for the giving today. Thank you so much for understanding the value of giving. I want to also appeal for people to reposition themselves where the kids are coming out of uh, uh, as we pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we honor you for the giving of your people. We thank you for your faithfulness, for this church and the missions that we have out in Tana River and also all the programs that we, are, uh, we have embarked on. We ask that you bless everyone that has given and continue to bless them according to your promise to bless those that would give cheerfully and faithfully in Jesus' name. And Lord, for our children right now as we release them to go to their classes, what a non-honorable thing. Tuakushukuluwe mungu kwa hawa toto. Tunamini hawa watoto wakikuwa wawe watu wazima, hawa tariacha neno lako. Tunambea wal, walimu wetu, wale haba wanahusika na, 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 na idala na ya watoto, uwakubuke. Hasa siku ya leo, uwawezeshe kulishitikisha neno lako kwa hawa watoto kwa jia mba watayelewa. Na kushukulu kwa yote katika jina Yesu Kristo mkombozi wetu. Amen. God bless you. As you go, please open uh, the side doors so that the kids can be able to file out uh, slowly. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I said blessed be the name of the Lord. Uh, we're going to be, we appreciate God for our children. You can see the numbers. And what a awesome responsibility to be able to take care of uh, these youngsters uh, as they are growing up. And we believe that these leaders of tomorrow these leaders of today, as they are shaped through the word of God, uh, a lot of great things will happen. And we just honor the Lord for his faithfulness, uh, for giving us such a joy 
of being able to raise kids in the things of the Lord. I want us to go to the Word of God without taking, uh, just to look to the Word of God, focusing on a key passage that has been uh, a process that we have been going through. And I believe it's a great opportunity, not only for those in this congregation, but those watching this program around the world, this word is for you. And you need to receive it as a word from the Lord that will change your life, that will touch your life and do wonderful things in your personal life. So if you can visit with me the book of Galatians chapter number 6, Galatians chapter number 6, focusing on uh, the, the verse number 6 to verse number 9. And the Bible says, be not deceived. This is Apostle Paul writing to the church in Galatia saying, be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap or harvest. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap uh, life everlasting. And let us not be wary in well-doing, for in due season, in due season, we shall harvest if we do not faint. I also want us to focus to two additional passages of scripture to establish a platform on the message today. Job chapter number four and verse number eight. Job, uh, the fourth chapter, verse eight. Even as I have seen those who prowl iniquity, and so trouble harvest the same. I want you to capture that very well uh, in, the, in the principles that are there for the sowing and the reaping principle because it's a principle of God's word says, even as I have seen, this is Job's testimony, those who prowl iniquity and sow trouble harvest the same. Another passage of scripture, Hosea chapter number 10 and verse number 12. Sow for yourself righteousness, harvest mercy, break up your furrow grounds, for it is time to seek the Lord till he comes and rains righteousness on you. Father, have your way in this world. For those healing everywhere, God of heaven, speak to our hearts. We are open in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, the principle is so true. Notice the principle that Apostle Paul is communicating because it is a principle. You see, principles don't change. And principles are universal. Pri principles work everywhere. And this is a principle. And Apostle Paul takes time to be able to emphasize. He begins by telling, her, uh, telling us not to question the, uh, the validity of this principle. What does he say? Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. He puts that caution first. Before even giving the instructions, he says, do not be deceived. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. Now, the word deceived means do not be read astray. When Apostle Paul wrote this passage, the language he used is a command tone. It is coupled with very strong prohibition. And it's good to take note of that. Because he was rebuking a weakness that was there among us, the people of Galatia, who are people who are telling them it does not make a difference. But today we would like to make a statement that God is faithful and God will always make a distinction between those who serve him and those who reject him. And this principle, this principle of sowing and harvesting works in every situation, in every circumstance. Take note of this. We live in a day when the law of sowing and, and reaping is challenged by those who do not want to embrace the truth. And sometimes we find blackened condemnations, especially for many who scoff, those who believe that if you sow faithfully, you will be able to harvest faithfully. But I do not know the, the reason why anybody would doubt this. Because even in the natural, you harvest what you sow. If you, have, if you plant maize, what happens? You harvest maize. If you plant beans, what do you harvest? Beans. And in this connection, 
without necessarily departing from the concept of those who use this passage to only talk about the sowing of the seeds in terms of uh, finances and materials, you need to understand that even the words that you speak are seed. The actions you do are seed. But that does not take away the truth of the reality that if you sow the seed because the context of this scripture we cannot completely remove the reality that the law of sowing and reaping in this context would also be talking about our faithfulness and commitment to God in the life of giving. And actually the subheading in some of the Bibles would say, be generous and be good. Come and tell your neighbor, be generous and be good. I get so concerned when people think that they can get away with doing things that are evil, disregarding the principle that if you are doing wrong, you are sowing seeds that will come back to you. And God is faithful. That's what we say, that all men be liars, but God be true. Sometimes people who are young and unstable in the word of God are caught up in the middle of the war of words. And they doubt whether it really makes a difference whether you are going to sow uh, faithfully or not. But those deceivers who brantantly uh, stand against the promise of God will one day answer for their actions. Paul stands firm on the principle of sowing and reaping and lets his voice be heard and he says, God is not mocked. I say God is not mocked. And you need to understand that it is before God. It is before him. When, you, when, we, when we say that everything is naked before God with whom we have to do. And therefore, God does not need any investigations to be done about you because he knows everything. Hallelujah. I know many times there will be inquiries will be done. We have heard people say there need to be a, co a commission to inquire into a matter. Let me tell you that is for your purpose and my purpose but not God. Because God sees all things. God knows all things. There is nothing that is hidden before him. And therefore as we bring this message today we would like to make a statement that this principle is a principle for all. This is the principle that does not regard who you are in terms of rank. It, does not, it doesn't discriminate any person, but it's a principle. So we're going to be bringing several points in this discussion. But I must be able to say so firmly that we must dissociate ourselves with people who try to water down the principles of God's word. Because the word of God remained forever. Hallelujah. There could be a few people who corrupt the word of God for certain reasons, but that does not take away from the fundamental reality of the truth of who God is. And the reality of the word of God 